Hello everyone. Welcome to Physiotherapy in Lesotho. www.physioinlesotho.ch. You are listening to a podcast from one of our physio workshop in Lesotho. Your speaker is Ndade Tuso, W Fasa, a qualified physiotherapist. Physiotherapy after major surgery, post-operative physiotherapy. This is a standard program made to patients who had some major surgery. And in our hospitals, mainly it's cesarean section, laparotomy, one thing or another. Thank you, Kelly boy. And some surgery on the chest. These are the reasons for major surgery. We have patients, maybe they had orthopedic surgery, and they will be on bedside, but it's not so an influencing type of surgery as a cesarean section or a laparotomy. Anyhow, if a patient with orthopedic surgery is a little bit in trouble, we give him the same post-operative surgery. But in general, it's cesarean section women, laparotomy patient or patient with thoracic surgery, which we find in our hospital. These are the three types of surgery which need post-operative physiotherapy. What we want with this post-operative physiotherapy is that the patient doesn't encounter complications. We can prevent complication with that. We prevent pneumonia, we prevent difficulties in movement, we prevent thrombosis, and we can even prevent some metabolic disorder which can occur after operation. So mainly we do this post-operative physiotherapy because we want to prevent complication. We want to mobilize the patient very early because we know lying in the bed after surgery, if it is not really necessary, is not so healthy. We have to move the people. As soon you move them, as better it is. Therefore, we prevent complication, we create early mobilization to help the patient to get rid of all the problems they had after that operation. So, we have to see if the patient is able to stand this program. But anyhow, what we want to do with post-operative physiotherapy is preventing complications and to do early mobilization. To do that, we have to consider certain things. First of all, we have to consider the condition. Sometimes the condition is so bad of the patient, the patient is unconscious or is so confused or dizzy or is so weak because maybe he came late, the surgery was really an emergency surgery. So the patient is too weak to be mobilized or is unconscious, is confused. So we cannot do that. We have to consider the, the meaning, the idea of the surgeon. Before we mobilize a patient after surgery, we have to have the okay from the surgeon. We ask him, can we mobilize him? He will say, yes. The day later, start to mobilize. Or as a cesarean section woman, normally we start the same day. If she was operated, maybe during the night, the day later, you mobilize her already. If she's operated in the morning, in the evening, you help her already to go out of bed. So within the first 24 hours you do it. But we have to ask the surgeon, is it okay we mobilize? He says yes or no, because he knows what he has done in the belly, etc., etc. So sometimes the surgeon has a reason, he says, no, let's keep her two days on bed rest. So we have to consider the condition of the patient. We have to consider what the surgeon's plan is to mobilize. And then we have to consider the patient can we move it, move her, him by your own, or do we have to be two to do it? If it is a big man, maybe a, or a heavy person, or maybe the person is a little bit confused, you better do it with two, somebody together. Don't do it alone. Don't take a risk. 
But if it is maybe a person who is not so big, is small, it's easy going, she's quite conscious, is cooperative, you can do it by your own. It's an easy job. Mostly the cesarean section women, just by your own you can mobilize. But you just consider a bit if it's possible to do by your own or in two, so you can decide to. So we have to consider these three facts. The condition of the patient, the plan of the surgeon, and if you can do it by your own or if you have to be two to do it. So now we are ready to do these procedures. What is included in this procedure of post-operative physiotherapy? What we do is we do some exercise with the patient to deepen the ventilation, to deepen the breathing, that they breathe deeper, that they have a good breathing, because if they breathe well, they will have oxygen. If they have oxygen, they have more energy. If they have more energy, they can be more active. So they have to breathe deeply. That's the third thing. We do deep breathing exercises. And then we encounter sometimes something which we will call the, the exhale with sound breathing, you know it. If that patient maybe breathes only up here on the chest, because maybe it's a patient with a cut on the belly, so they are afraid, she breathes like this, <laughs> only up here. She will have less oxygen. Maybe she's not breathing deeply because she's afra afraid of the pain. Or sometimes in the mind of a person is the idea, if I stress my belly, maybe the wound will open and the belly comes out. So that fear is natural, it's normal, people doesn't know that it won't come out. But so they are afraid and then they breathe very superficially. So we help them to breathe deep. We ask them, breathe in and breathe out with a sound. <sighs> like this. Mm. Please do that. Make that exhale with a sound. Mm. Yes. While doing like this, you keep open the throat. Air is flowing. And now there is a trick. If you breathe out deeply, patient will breathe in better afterwards. A deep exhale produces a deep inhale. Therefore, we just focus on breathing out and the patient will breathe in deeply. To protect a little bit the wound, we put the hand on it. The patient can put on it so it feels more safe and they can start to breathe better. So let's say our patient starts to breathe nicely with that exhale with sound. It's doing quite well. We teach the second thing. This is the wound protecting cuff method. Let's write it down. <coughs> if you write down, please, as well, the debriefing technique, exhale with sound, and the second technique we use, we teach the wound protecting cuff method. Patient after operation, they are afraid to cough, but sometimes they should cough that they can clear the airways. So we help them. Let's say the patient had a cut. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> had a cut like this laparotomy. So you put the hand on it and show them that they can grasp the belly. They squeeze it a bit. So the borders of the wound are even a little bit more attached. Now when you cuff, you do the exhale cuff, it won't pull on, on the scar here. So you just hold it. Patient learns to hold herself. You just fix the wound without squeezing too much, but a little bit, yes. So you just hold it, so while cuffing, it's not pulling apart, and you won't have a stat pain. If it is a cesarean section, the cut is horizontally, so you catch it like this. You just <coughs> hold it a little bit with your hand, and then when it will be stressed by the cuff, it won't be pulled a lot. And 
patient during coughing feels much less pain. So they feel empowered, they feel fine, they say, ah, okay, I can protect myself with that technique. So they can allow themselves to cough. So we have two things which we are doing before we start to move and to mobilize. We teach deep breathing, we use this exhale with sound. Second, we are teaching the wound protective cuff method. So having taught these two techniques to the patient, we start with the third one, movement, active exercise. Active exercise, we start with the turtle, open, closing. They move up and down the feet. They circle the feet inside. They circle them outside. If they can, they flex a leg, they bend the leg, they extend the leg, they bend the knees, they extend the knee, to moving like this. And you do the same with the hand. If there is a drip on one side, do it just with the other one. Don't move too much on the first day where they have a drip. You just do it on the one side where there is no drip, closing, opening, circling, bending elbow, extending elbow, coming up really, coming down with the arm. The side of the drip, you just lift up the arm straight and down. You move the shoulder a little bit. You can lift up the head, you turn the head to the left, to the right. Exercise like this, we start and we give it to the patient to activate the blood flow and to activate metabolism. These exercises are helpful. When the patient learned it, we tell them, do it many days during the day. Just move. Move your ankle joints, move your wrist joints, move the knee, move the elbow. Where you can move, move. Where maybe you cannot, let's say, at the drip, don't move. We will help them to turn to the side. If surgeon says, okay, you can turn over, we will turn to one side and then to the other side with help. So that the body is just changing position. These are activities, movement, which we will do even on the first day, very gently, very slowly, without forcing too much. And the patient should have really pain. We don't trouble them, but if it is possible, let's do them. If the patient is so weak, is so painful, so maybe you just move the feet and the hands. We have to consider the condition, as I said before. When we have done the active exercises, then we start to mobilize the patient. Hold on. <laughs> uh, can you still hear me? Okay, so you mobilize the patient to the side-lying position and then do the sitting position. And when the patient is sitting, you wait there. Wait for a while, just talk to the patient, do some exercise with the foot. Just make sure patient is stable, is stable in blood pressure. So sometimes it can be that the blood pressure is lowering down and then the patient is somehow dizzy so it's better you bring him back to bed but if blood pressure is stable patient is okay then we can proceed to the standing position and have the patient next to the bed and you wait again you just observe is everything okay blood pressure is stable okay if she is fine we can do three steps or we sit her or him to the chair. While sitting on a chair, somebody has to be there. On the first day, being mobilized after major surgery, we don't leave the patient alone. Somebody has to be there. If the patient is quite fine, you have to do something else. You call one of the nurse assistants and say, you, Ausi, you stay with that patient. If there is a problem, call me immediately. But if you see the patient is maybe a little bit weak somehow, not perfect, it's better you stay there. The first mobilization of the patient shall be accompanied by the nurse. So you just wait there and stay there for five minutes and you bring her back again to, to the bed. 
Now let's think, what is one of the emergency situation, one of the bad complication which can, can occur after major operation when you mobilize the patient? What can be one of that bad emergency we can encounter? You mobilize a patient, everything is well, sitting there, then suddenly a complication occurs. What it is? It's pulmonary thrombosis, pulmonary emboli. So maybe a blood clot in the pelvic veins or even in the leg vein, but mostly it's in the pelvic vein, is loosening itself, shooting up to the heart and shooting up to the lung. Patient will feel a sudden shot, really a, a sharp pain in the lung. You will see the patient is dyspneic. Patient has to be moved immediately to the bed and has to be treated in an emergency with the doctor. If the patient is lucky, he will survive that. And if you have immediate help, it can survive. If it is a huge pulmonary emboli, patient normally don't survive, they just die on the spot. Luckily, it's so rarely dead, but it happened. It happened after major surgery. And normally it happens when you are not expecting it. So therefore, let's be aware, in the first two, three days when you mobilize a patient, that can be happen. Unfortunately, it can be happen. So let's be aware about it. Therefore, I say, to that one who is looking for a patient, if there is a problem, immediately call me. Call somebody to tell, emergency, come. Then we have to rush and then probably it's possible to help this patient. So luckily it's very rarely that problem, but it exists and it comes whenever you're not thinking about. Okay, so if everything goes well, we have mobilized the patient, we bring them to bed, we will do that twice a day not the first day you walk outside, but maybe the second day. You just go and do for a few steps, a few meters, you walk with that person. And if they are quite fine, you can walk even outside for just two, three minutes and you bring them back again. They will be accompanied in the beginning when they are all in the dreams and things like this. But then when they are already in the wards and things are going better, so they can start to mobilize themselves. Post-operative physiotherapy normally we do in the first three, four days. Things are most stable then, things are going well, so we start to talk about rehabilitation. The post-operative physiotherapy will be done on the same day and if the patient is operated on Friday night, so it will be done on Saturday, and if there is no physiotherapist, the nurse, nurse assistant will do it. So we have to do that on the weekends as well. Or if there is no physiotherapy that, that institution, nurse is going to do it. It's one of the physiotherapy skills which nurses can apply. And it's so helpful when we do early mobilization to major surgery patients because they develop mass, much less complications. Early mobilization helps them really. If we are careful, as we were outlining now, things go smooth and we can do it. If you are not sure by yourself, just do it together. In two, you cope much better with this situation. Then you feel safe and you can do a good job to the patient. Have you experienced that situation that you were helping mobilizing a major surgery patient? In maternity, cesarean section? Oh, have you looking at somebody who was doing it? Did you observe it? Not really. Okay, so it's time to do it. So next time when you are on the ward, there's a cesarean section, just watch when Mecha Schlies or somebody from the physiotherapy is going there to do that, assist them, so you get comfortable with it. When we start as a junior, we assist somebody who is already a senior, who has done it many times. So then they will help us and then we get confident with it and then we will do it. It's not difficult to do it, but we have to follow the procedure. And if you follow the procedure, you will be safe and things go fine. It's no problem. 
when the rain is over, we go over there and we will practice it. So we do step one after other, step by step, and then you get confident with the procedure. Is there some question about that? No question.